<laughs> this is where it goes bad. <laughs> when the paint starts getting used. <laughs> I'm really good at the first step. I'm really good at, at just putting water on the white canvas. But this is where it gets complicated for me. Hi everybody, you are watching the very first ever episode of Watching Paint Dry. This is going to be a little video web series where I sit down with a Bay County local who I think does something cool or contributes to the Palmetto Paint goal of making every canvas count. Um, Nicole Phillips, Director of Lavish Ministries, has agreed to be my guinea pig for the first episode. Um, I met Nicole, I guess a year and a half ago? Or a year ago? Something like yeah, that. Yeah, probably about a year and a half. Yeah. Because a year ago this month is when... Is when, when we did the first When we had our first fundraiser. Yeah. And I completely messed up my painting. And so JD let me take home his painting that was very professionally done of a pumpkin. <laughs> And my mom displayed it for everyone to see all, <laughs> all Thanksgiving of 2020. And I, I bet you, I bet you $100 she still has it. She'll, to be fair. She will put it back out this year. You did put like the berries and stuff. I put the, the berries on, there. on it. So I you did. signed it too. It's fine. I did. <laughs> I did. I'm very proud of it. I met Nicole after listening to her podcast, Stripped Christianity, which, shameless plug, it's really good. And it's coming back. And it's coming back. We're filming four episodes next week on the 11th. I just filmed a new one, didn't you? New video. Uh, well, we did, like, we did like an audio type thing okay. with, with um, one of our volunteers, um, but it's like a relaunch. We're doing like a complete relaunch next week. Cool. Well, we're filming next week. It'll probably be out like in January. Yeah. So. Yeah. So what I'm going to be doing in this video series is just sitting down and painting with a Bay County local that, again, that I think does something cool. Um, I've got a couple of people lined up to come on. I don't know how many episodes it's going to be. Might be two, one month, and then wait three months to do another one I don't know but I thought it would be a cool way to share some stuff about people that we work with through Palmetto Paint um, and the things that they do in our community right, Nicole do you want to tell us about Lavish Ministries and what you guys do sure so um, Lavish Ministries had its beginning um, really when I was 17 years old I came across a television interview one night about 1130 at night you know, in my parents' house, watching TV in my little box TV in my room. And um, there was this woman on the 700 Club on TBN who was sharing her testimony of how she was an escort who worked in Las Vegas. And um, she just was telling her story of all of the trauma she dealt with while being in the sex industry and all of the things she went through in her life in general. And um, really after hearing her story, I just felt like, an immediate draw to you know helping women who were in the same situation as she once was in and um i literally turn off the tv after watching this 10 minute interview and i go out into the living room and i verbatim said mom and dad you know i know i'm called to do for the rest of my life and that was really the start so i was 17 just saw this tv interview one day and um just felt this this immediate calling to it so within the next year i enrolled into a bible college a ministry school up in um south of atlanta in georgia in griffin georgia and uh served there for almost two years and then ended up trans um transitioning back to panama city which is my home and finished my degree here then after i finished this degree in in biblical studies i just really felt called to start and so stepped out in ministry and um here we are today seven years later seven years later this month actually it's our seventh year say it's november yeah seventh year anniversary is this month so now you, you just finished up your master's didn't you i did so I, I got my bachelor's in biblical studies in 2014. okay um went through a breakup i was dating a guy for four years he was a pastor we were together all throughout school in okay. college and um, when that relationship mutually ended, um, it really kind of forced me to kind of find my calling again. Because all throughout college, I was like, yeah, I have this desire to, to reach women in the, in the sex industry and, and minister to them and, mm -hmm. and impact their lives. But, you know, I'm, I'm with a man who 
his calling is to be a pastor. And right. so I kind of came to terms with, okay, maybe I'm just called to be a pastor's wife, which there's nothing wrong with that. I just kind of always internally knew that wasn't my calling. Right. Um, so when the breakup happened, it was like, okay, God, like you, you gave me this vision at 17 and now I'm 21. So maybe now's the time to step out in that. Mm-hmm. So that's what happened. Christmas of 2014, um, you know, three months after the breakup was when Lavish started. Yeah. And here we are. And it started out as just you, right? Yeah, I mean... Other than, you know, your church volunteers and stuff like sure. that. Sure, so it, it was just me. Um, mm-hmm. Lavish is, is definitely my baby, my mm-hmm. my heart, you know, and um, how we started was I had this crazy idea of, you know, Christmas is coming up, and, you know, I, I want to reach women in, this, in the industry. How do I do that? Well, Christmas is coming up. Let's bring Christmas gifts to the girls who are working on Christmas mm-hmm. in the strip clubs. And so me and two um, of my, my girlfriends who are you know, just as wild and you know, unique and creative as I am, we literally put together 60 gift bags and I walked into every club, every strip club in Bay County and we just gave the, the dancers Christmas gifts. And y'all and do that every year now, right? We do that every month. Every month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we've done that over, uh, it's our 85th month this oh, month. Wow. So, I mean, so we've been in at least 85 times. The last time I counted, I've personally been into strip clubs over 500 times. <laughs> Do you have a t-shirt that says I that? I should. You should get a t-shirt that says that. I should. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a, I'm How many a, times have you been in a strip club? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like over 500 times uh, at this point, which is pretty funny. Because uh, like, like here I am, like on paper, like if I get mail from from certain um, agencies, it will say Reverend Nicole Phillips. Yeah. So it's like I am a minister who has been into strip clubs <laughs> actively, like Continuing to go over 500 times, and you know, it's just it's a great conversation starter. It is a great conversation starter, <laughs> to be fair. So, yeah, when people ask what I do and I'm, I'm trying to be funny, I say, I hug naked women for Jesus. Can I get some saying what? Again, that needs to be a t shirt. <laughs> That's that, yes. I, I would, I'll put that on the shirt. I hug naked women for Jesus. I feel like you need to be really selective about who gets one, uh, but yeah, like that's yeah, that's a great yeah. idea. For we could sell those. We could sell those. <laughs> that would just be me and Kendra. And yeah, that's just you and Kendra. Carrie, if you were volunteers. <laughs> so Kendra, is, what is Kendra's actual title now? So Kendra is our survivor advocate. Hi, Kendra. I'm sure you're going to watch What's this that, at some point. <laughs> so we hired Kendra. So well, let me get some backstory. Kendra um, was once in the industry. She was also a survivor of domestic violence. Mm-hmm. She was also a survivor of human trafficking. Um, her story is absolutely incredible. She ended up being in the life as a whole for over 10 years. And um, she was involved kind of beginning in like 2017. I started mentoring her and she ended up speaking at one of our events. Um, she's a pastor's daughter, so she naturally has like the gift of speaking. Mm-hmm. And, um, this did, pastor's kids. Pastor's kids. He cares. <laughs> and so did absolutely incredible. And really in 2018, we started the conversation of, hey, what would it look like for you to move here and work with Lavish? And so that's always kind of been like in the back of our heads. Um, last year, so 2020, July, she has a dream. And um, she calls me the next morning and says, Nicole, I think I just had like a God dream. I said, okay, what, what was the dream? And she's like, well... I had a dream that I was in Panama City working with you, and like it was my job, like I was getting paid to do it. And I was like, okay. And she was like, and I felt like like God told me it was going to be in October. Like by October 1st of this year, I will be employed and working in Panama City with Lavish. She was living in Chicago. Right, that's right? what, yeah. So um, I literally laughed at her on the phone. I said, I said, you know, I don't doubt you, but you're crazy because we don't have the money to hire you. <laughs> Said, I said, we're barely. It is a nonprofit. Kind of, I was like, we are barely kind of scraping by right now. Right. Like, we just got a new office space. Um, you know, so we we had more expenses than we've ever had before. And so, like, hiring someone was just kind of like not in my like, brain. Not really in the cards. Yeah. No, it just it just wasn't like a realistic <clears throat> thing, a realistic goal that was going to happen within the next like five months. Right. Um, what do you know? About forty eight hours later, <laughs> I receive a check in the mail, and that check. I was expecting it to be about five grand. Mm-hmm. I opened the check and it was $20,000. And it was from a person who saw a Facebook post of ours shared on social media okay. and um, felt like God told him to give 20 grand. And so I opened this check and I end up getting in touch with the person who donated. I, we, I get him on the phone mm-hmm. and I said, hey, <laughs> 
I got the check. <laughs> um, almost choked on the food I was eating. Did, did you mean to add a zero here? Yeah, it, for real. <laughs> I was like, hey, so I asked him, I was like, what do you want me to do with this money? Like, I know, like, the 5000 he was giving was allocated towards a specific program we were doing um, for online escort outreach. We were, okay. we were purchasing a, a bot that was going to help us um, reach more women through online means. And um, anyways, I asked him, like, the other 15000 what do you want me to do with this money? And he basically said, you and your board, like, you guys know what your needs are, so you pick, you talk to them, and whatever you want to do is fine with me. Wow. So he gave us full freedom to do what we wanted, so I immediately schedule a board meeting and say, yeah. hey, guys, remember Kendra? Because I've, I've, this wasn't new to my board. I've been talking to them for, for years about hiring Kendra, but mm -hmm. it was always just not really realistic. And I said, hey, guys, uh, so uh, it's about Kendra. <laughs> and um, it was a unanimous vote. They all said yes. And... That's awesome. We hired Kendra, and she was here no, um, October 1st. That's last last year. Wow. So that's kind of how that came to be. And now she's here to, you know, one year of being with Lavish. And and y'all have two office locations now? We do. We have one in Panama City, um, which is right off of Jake's near the 23rd side of, of the city. Mm -hmm. And um, that's mainly my office. And then Lauren, who is our operations manager, we just hired Lauren two months ago. Oh, wow. So I we actually I... have two employees now other than me. So, um, yeah, so me and Lauren are housed in the Jenks Avenue office. And mm -hmm. then Kendra, she has her office in Callaway. Okay. And we call her office the Survivor Center. Mm -hmm. And um, actually, in big letters on the wall, it's like big teal and pink letters, it says the Survivor Center has our logo on the wall. And, um, well, she's our survivor advocate. What a survivor advocate is, is Kendra, as someone with lived experience of mm -hmm. being in the life of being survivors of, you know, a survivor of abuse and of trafficking, um, she's able to use her lived experience to pour into the lives of, of other women and mentor them. And so she's our survivor advocate. She works in the survivor center. And um, she constantly is meeting with girls one-on-one -on -one to, to mentor them and case management and give referrals and really just be a support system. Uh, many of the girls who come see us don't have a healthy support system. So right. um, that's really her role is just walking with the women. So I know this number changes a lot, but what is your current caseload Ooh. overall? Of like active girls who are actively seeing us right. consistently. Yeah. Um, I would say we average, I'd say about 30 at a time. Okay. Um, you know, but it's so fluid because we'll be meeting with girls and talking to a girl, you know, for weeks and weeks or months and months and all of a sudden sometimes they'll ghost. Mm -hmm. And usually it's because they went back to the life and they feel embarrassed, like, oh, like I made so much progress and I was sober and I was getting my life together, but then I fell back. Right. And so they feel, in a sense, like guilty, but there's no guilt or shame or anything. That's why we're here, you know, whether well, you're in the, the industry whole point. or... Yeah. Or, or whether you're in the industry and love it or whether you are in it and hate it and want to get out or whether you've been out for the past 10 years but still need support and mm -hmm. you need to talk to someone who understands what you've been through, um, we're just here. So there's no, there's no guilt or shame or any of, any of that in Lavish whatsoever. But, um, but yeah, I'd say we average about 30 women at a time, give okay. or take. It's like all these women from different walks of life, from different churches, from different states and cities all over the country ended up here and felt like their calling was to work with Lavish. So it's just been a really cool experience. And you've got supporters from multiple denominations, multiple states. Yeah. And that's been something kind of crazy because, you know, I'm, like I told you, I'm on paper. No one, no one calls me Pastor Nicole or anything. Right. I don't want them to. <laughs> Please don't. But on paper, um, yeah, I'm, I'm an ordained minister with the Assemblies of God, mm -hmm. but I never wanted lavish ministries to be a assemblies of god denominational thing right um i always thought it was very interdenominational non-denominational just because the girls we work with are very diverse mm -hmm. and i didn't want it to be attached and, and our church support is also very very diverse um so yeah we have methodist churches who are some of our biggest biggest supporters we have pentecostal churches and baptist churches and non-denominational churches and um I feel like a you Hispanic are speaking at churches. different churches every weekend. I'm so. always at a different church. <laughs> so what are some of the, um, I guess, tangible things that y'all do for some of the women that you work with? Because I know, you know, you do different things like pay for gas or mm -hmm. 
get them uh, rent assistance if they need it, things like that, if they qualify, all that fun stuff. Yeah. So um, LAV is just really, we're broken up into three categories, and it's outreach, support, and emergency assistance. Mm-hmm. So outreach, you know, like I said, we go into the clubs, we go into massage parlors, um, we do online escort outreach, which I mentioned earlier, which is, you know, there's there's websites known for advertising prostitution and it happens right. locally. And so we actually go onto the websites and contact the women who are being advertised on there. Um, support, so how, we... How does that go sometimes? Contacting the women. Like, does it does it usually go well or does it... Is yeah. It, okay. Um, e- well, either it's kind of like a hit or miss. Either right. they don't respond at all or sometimes you get... A pimp who responds. Okay. Um, but it's never like anything like crazy. It's just right. kind of like stop talking to my girl. Gotcha. Um, but then you have girls who are like, hey, that can I call you in ten minutes? Mm-hmm. Or it'll be like, hey, so wait, what do you want? Who are you? What are you trying to do? It's just like we're just a group of women who offer support if you need it. And um, yeah, there's been times where we've gotten actually on the phone with girls and their trafficker would walk into the room or the pimp would walk into the room and they would have to hang up really fast. But then five minutes later, they would call us back and be like, okay, he's gone, I can talk now. Hmm. And it's, yeah, it's kind of wild. Um, so yeah, so online escort outreach, massage parlor outreach. Mm-hmm. Um, and then support, so we mentor the girls one-on-one. We have group classes, which is something we're hosting here tonight, actually. Yes. is a Thanksgiving party for the girls who have been in our support groups. Um, but what's cool is, you know, a lot of the women we work with are single moms, and so for our support groups, we actually offer childcare. Mm-hmm. And so the women can bring their kids, and the kids have their own lesson that's taught by one of our volunteers. And Oh, cool. I didn't uh, know that. Yeah. And then um, the adult women have their own lesson. So um, support, so mentoring, group classes, Bible studies, all of that goes into the support, the emotional, spiritual support. Mm-hmm. And then the tangible support, so emergency assistance. Um, once again, that could be victims of trafficking or domestic violence or not. Sometimes, you know, a woman, when she's leaving the industry, a simple $300 car bill or, or car repair could be the difference between her and her kids being homeless right. or not, or her being tempted to go back into the club to make mm-hmm. ends meet or back into the porn industry. You know, if I do one film or one scene, I can make enough money to pay this bill. So our goal is to make it so that no woman ever feels like she has to sell her body Mm -hmm. to make ends meet, to meet the basic needs. I'm not talking about buying a new car or or a home or or plastic surgery. I'm saying like to meet basic essential needs for you and your kids, I want, my goal, our goal is to make it so that no one feels like she has to sell her body to meet a basic need. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's the church's role, that's our role as Christians to serve and, and to be generous with our funding and and um, to be cheerful givers, right? Mm-hmm. That's in scripture. And so um, that's why we're here is, yeah, we, we, we've we been very blessed with, with money and resources. And, you know, we're, we don't, we're not rich by any means, but we've never had to say no to a to a real um, need. And that's really, you know? yeah, that is awesome. So it's been incredible. That's a good pink. That's really like yeah, our, like our actual pink color. So how did you guys come up with the name? Lavished Ministries. I think I've asked you that before, but... Yeah, so um, two reasons. Number one, uh, it's taken from 1 John 3, 1. Mm -hmm. Um, The verse is, How great the Father's love that he has lavished upon us, that we should all be called the children of God. And so um, that verse. But then second to that is one of my favorite um, worship songs. It's called Pour My Love On You. And it's by... um, a group called Phillips, Craig, and Dean. And um, it was a, a song that was probably popular in the early 2000s. And uh, the chorus of it says, if, if praise is like perfume, I lavish mine on you. And it's talking about um, the woman who washed Jesus' feet mm-hmm. and how she used her perfume and she dried her feet with his feet with her hair. And just this, this act of submission and of... Um, worship to the Lord you know she didn't have anything other than this expensive perfume but she used that perfume on the feet of Jesus which you know back in biblical times washing someone's feet was a sign of respect right whenever you would walk into someone's home the first thing that host would do would would be to wash your feet Mm -hmm. and um this woman that was her act of worship to Jesus and so I just thought that was a beautiful um picture of 
you know, what we, what our desire is to do with the women that, that we serve. It's, you know, to wash their feet, but mm-hmm. we don't wash their feet. It's, right. it's to serve them, um, you know, and just, just to, to, once again, meet a basic need. Right. Washing someone's feet in, in biblical times was, was meeting a basic, tangible need. And that's what, that's what we do. So. So where did the logo come from? I don't think I've ever asked you that one before. Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> okay, so um, this is actually our second logo. Our original logo was very similar, um, same typography. Mm-hmm. Uh, we just had a different heart. Um, this logo, is, I, I like it a lot because the heart is definitely more pronounced and we can add some color to it. Um, I've always liked hearts. Like, and I, I just think like hearts is a symbol of love, which once again, it's really like the, the backbone of what we do is right. that of love. and. Um, yeah, so I wanted a heart to be involved somehow. I wanted like a big bold graphic, like a big bold logo, lavished all big letters. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. So I want something simple, but something with some color that we can add. Um, you know, something that was a little versatile. So some of our logos, our new logo, anyways, sometimes the heart is above the lavish, which is how we have it here. Mm-hmm. But also sometimes we have a version of the logo where the heart's actually to the left Next side to of the L. Right. Um, so it's more long, elongated. Um, yeah. So honestly, it was just kind of an idea in my head, and an awesome artist made it happen on on paper. Cause cool. I'm not good at that stuff. <laughs> so, so I kind of told him what I wanted, and luckily he kind of got the idea of what I was asking. Okay. I'm almost done with the vished. <laughs> vished. La- lavished. <laughs> I finished the lav. Now I'm I'm working on the 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 vish. So what other organizations, besides Palmetto the Paint, obviously, of but course. what other organizations do y'all work with in Bay County? Because I know it's several that yeah. I can think of off the top of my head, but I, I'm sure there's more. So we work with uh, the Children's Advocacy Center mm-hmm. um, and, and their sexual assault program. We work with Salvation Army, um, Catholic Charities, Family Service Agency is one that not a lot of people know about. Um, but they have a, a clothing closet, a food closet. Um, Humble House is one. They're, they're a, a recovery home for, for women mm-hmm. in recovery from substance abuse. Um, Titus Two Partnership is one with Miss Kathy Bird. Um, they house women in recovery as well. Um, what else we got? I know I'm missing some. Um, I feel like we work kind of hand in hand with a lot of agencies. Just with mental health and right and um yeah sub- substance use uh, trauma therapy um yeah there it's just you know homelessness so uh you know it's just it's just a lot that goes hand in hand with the population we serve and mm-hmm. um, getting them the resources they need because sometimes you know we don't have to buy everything or do everything ourselves there's people in the community who right you know maybe they have government funding that they need to do they you know they need mm-hmm. to be paying you know light bills and housing assistance we just have to connect our girls to the resource um, which sometimes takes time to find what resources where but um, you know we try our best to be good stewards of our funds but also we know when to you know kick in when when uh we need to we are 100% privately funded. Mm-hmm. We're funded by churches and by families and individuals, um, a few businesses who just want to help people. And we have no red tape with government or state fund, you know, state funding of any kind, right. federal funding of anything. Um, so we are really just able to say, okay, this girl needs a $200 car repair, which literally yesterday we had a girl, she had 40 tires for her car, newly out of sex trafficking, mm-hmm. has a vehicle, um, is living in her vehicle. We're trying to find housing for her. But in the meantime, she had four tires that were just like down to the bare bones. Highly oh dangerous gosh. to be driving. Yeah. So um, we took her yesterday and bought four four tires for her. And um, so once again, you know, two hundred dollars. You know, what's what's two hundred dollars to help to help right. someone? And, for active ministry. Yeah. And you know, and as you know, you're waiting for the car to get repaired. You're able to to speak with her and yeah. you know get to know her more. She gets to know you and, and build rapport with you because. You know, people, when they come out of a traumatic situation, trust is a very foreign concept and a very hard thing. So um, the more time we can spend building rapport face-to-face, the better. And that's what happened yesterday. So um, it's just very, very, very cool to see kind of how the hand of God works and orchestrates 
pe people to come across our paths. Okay, yeah, what's my balance. next step? Do I have a next step? Or That's call, up to you. You can do highlights. You can do I'm going to add a little bit of gold, but then we'll just we'll yeah, call, we'll call it a day. Oh, this is my third painting I've done with you. You think the pumpkin? The pumpkin, the other one we did a few months ago yeah. here. What Doesn't was that one? Um, the fireworks. Oh, the fireworks, that's right. Which which was also displayed. Was it really? Well, see, okay, because my, bro brother came my brother came, and he's a much better painter than me. <laughs> and, um, but my parents, you know, they can't choose favorites because, you know, they're my parents. They so can't choose favorites. They, they, they hung, well, they didn't hang them, but both of the paintings sat in front of the fireplace for the whole month of July. Really? I want to say even, even some of August, it was still there. <laughs> um, but I, I asked my parents, <laughs> we, we brought our paintings home and, um, we said, okay, who do you think painted which one? And they obviously just laughed. We was like, oh, we know who painted which one. It was very clear. <laughs> it was very clear. <laughs> very clear that Josh was was the the fancy, pretty one. He did do was, a really good job. I was like, you did oh, a good job. He does. It, Josh has uh, like an art like an art gene. He has that. He can see things. He can do it on his tablet. He has like a painting app where he can just draw things and paint it. And, yeah. Um, I I'm not, lucky not if I do you. a stick figure like, well. Like I'm I'm not I'm not a painter. And tonight I, she's gonna try to paint some trees. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just two paintings in one day. I told I told you this was gonna be overwhelming for me. I'm going to need a therapy session after. That's all right. You know, it's just not not my strength. <laughs> but you know, I embrace it. I embrace I embrace the fact that it's not my strength. See, look, there's like depth to yours. Like you thought oh, about this. Oh, I've just this. been layering on. You thought about it. You, you know, you you executed it well. All your letters are even. Like sort of, kind of. I mean, like like <laughs> you know, the, like the the intensity of them is fairly the same. Like then you have the, a bunch of different colors all mixed and inter intertwined. And, I am just kind of like layering yeah, the colors yeah, on. You don't even have to think about it. Yeah. It's just so easy for you. <laughs> here, here I am meticulously trying not to, you know, paint outside the lines. It looks good though. I really like the pink that you. Ended I'm glad up that with. you stenciled it for me. You're welcome. <laughs> I thought that would make it a lot easier. Like, it's just coloring. <laughs> well, do you have anything uh, to plug or anything? Where, tell yeah. people about where they can reach you and sure. find out more about Lavish. So one thing I do want to plug, depending on when this video comes out, the whole month of December, all donations given to Lavish Ministries will be matched up to fifteen thousand dollars. Oh wow! So if you give, um, starting November thirtieth, which is my birthday, it's also Giving Tuesday. Um, November 30th to December 31st, all donations matched up to 15 grand. We've had a, a few donors step up and said they would be matching partners. And so we're trying to raise $30,000 in 30 days. So I think we can do it. It's possible. That's really cool. We just have to do it. So you can give lavishministries.com slash donate, or you could read more about us on the website itself. All the and info's there. you can find you guys on Facebook at We're on Facebook. Lavished. Lavish Ministries yeah. on Facebook. I actually think it may be Lavish Ministries, Inc. on Facebook. Um, you can message us, comment, let us know if you have any questions. And you can find out more about Palmetto Paint PC on Facebook. It's Palmetto Paint PC. Um, on Instagram, we use the hashtag Every Canvas Counts. We don't have an Instagram account. We just use our separate accounts and keep everything under the hashtag. Um, and then we have a website. It's a Weebly site, so it's super easy to go on and sign up for classes and events. Um, but Facebook gets updated more than just about anything as far as our stuff goes. Um, and then thank you to MySpace Downtown for letting us use their space for our studio stuff and uh letting us film here you want to show them your painting i'll show mine <laughs> oh yeah you'll show yours it's my painting you guys it's beautiful thank Came you beautiful thank you appreciate it <laughs> Who, who's is better <laughs> yeah. thank you guys for watching um i'm going to try to get this posted before thanksgiving hopefully even earlier than that but we'll see hey if it's posted in december then you're still you guys are still you know seeing that all the well now i gotta get it before december See, right <laughs> accountability my friend Account <laughs> accountability be before mid-december this has to be up so we can get some donations going you know yeah thirty thousand in december thirty thousand so fifteen thousand more we have 15 pledge we need 15 more awesome it's doable it's we can, doable we yeah. can do it we got this yeah <laughs> thank you guys for watching <laughs>